So what I've got here is the Garmin 920 XT. We're gonna give an open water swim a shot with live tracking um, during the swim itself, as well as heart rate data. Um, so both of those two are kind of pushing the bounds of what uh, what you traditionally do. But what I've got here is a, um, a swim buoy. This will kind of float right behind me. Um, and I'm using this mostly so I don't get run over by any boats out there. Um, but I can put the phone inside of that. And I'm putting the phone inside of a Ziploc bag because I don't quite trust the waterproofing on the, the bag 100% with a brand new phone only a couple weeks old. Then I've got the 920 XT here. And then finally, I've got the Mio Link um, optical heart rate strap there. And the reason I'm using this as opposed to traditional heart rate strap around your chest is because um, Amp Plus and Bluetooth smart signals can't travel more than a few inches underwater. So this goes ahead and ensures that I can place it right next to the watch itself and then get that data um, off the watch uh, later on. So I'll go ahead and I'll start this up by press the menus. Um, so I'm going to change the mode here to open water swim. That'll go ahead and find GPS in a second. It says wait for GPS, and then you should find it uh, within probably 10 seconds or so. And then shortly after that, now right there, you'll see the heart rate strap was found, which is good. Um, that's that 43639, that's the ant plus ID of the heart rate strap, and GPS was also done as well. Um, so next, I'll go over onto the app, and I will enable eye tracking. So I've gone ahead and I've created a title called Open Water Swim. And I've got Twitter enabled, so you can follow along if you um, did that earlier today. And I'll go ahead and press start live track. And then it's going to go and uh, live track is on. Um, and in theory at this point, it's also sent it to uh, a few other folks as well via email. Um, and then I've extended the sharing on so you can watch this uh, for 24 hours afterwards. So at this point, I can go ahead and enter in to open water swim. And now I'll go ahead and pack all this up and uh, get going swimming. So you can see here me swimming along. Um, you see the 920XT next to the meal lake underwater. And if we go above water, you can see the swim buoy behind me. And each time the watch goes above the water, uh, the 920XT will connect to it. Okay, as you can see, I just finished up my swim. Um, there's my swim buoy down there, and then the GoPro case I had in my swim shorts. Um, and I'm holding the GoPro now. So we'll go over to the Garmin 920XT. Um, we'll dismiss out the recovery heart rate. Um, you can see it measured uh, 2256 yards. Um, so over here on the other two washes, uh, the 910 is in my swim cap as a reference, and that was 1.16 miles. And the Suunto Amp 3 on my right wrist um, was 1.15 miles. Off the top of my head, I don't know exactly what uh, 1.16 miles is to yards, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty close to 2250 or so. Um, so you can see that there. And if I go ahead and go back to the main screen there, um, I've got all my, my data there. Um, I saw it drop out once on the uh, live tracking, and that was when I actually pulled out the GoPro from my the swim shorts, kind of put it underneath the, the edge of the shorts there. Um, and then, so the watch was underwater for about five seconds or so, and it dropped out. So I simply just took my hand, put it above the water for about five seconds, and it found the phone again and showed phone connected. Um, it was pretty easy to tell because it had vibrated at the same time uh, as it chirped, so it was pretty easy to find out. Um, so from here, we'll go ahead and look at the actual live data itself and see how that looks. So, uh, first, we'll look at the live data from the live track site, which was fed in real time, and then we'll look at the data that was actually uploaded to the watch to Garmin Connect. Okay, now that we've got the swim done, we're inside the uh, live tracking session. This is the session that's sent out to people automatically um, from the app that you would have seen earlier. Um, so in this case, it's showing the live data. Um, now, of course, because my swim is already done, it's showing me the save data. Um, it'll show it for 24 hours as long as you check the option for extended, um, which means it'll keep that data available for 24 hours. Otherwise, if you don't do that, it'll end the session as soon as you end your session. Um, so it's usually best to check that because that way if friends and family are looking, they know that um, you finished your session and haven't just simply died along the way. Um, so what you see here is my track um, as sent by the device in real time um, and you can see a brief stop point there um, that's actually when the uh, session briefly lost connectivity underwater I had grabbed a camera underwater and it took about three or four more seconds than normal um, so that meant that they lost connectivity and then it went ahead and resumed that afterwards. If I click on here on the one mile marker, I can see the, the overall time split for that, um, and then the total time and the average pace as well as the uh, total pace, and then of course my average heart rate up to that point in time. Um, I'm not quite sure why it shows the time split of 9.59 for the first mile marker since I didn't clear that until um, a bit later on, but um, that may be just more of a Garmin Connect bug than anything else. So that's the, the live tracking view. Of course, I can zoom in um, and look at things more carefully or closely. Um, and then down the bottom here, I have uh, the different graphs, including heart rate and cadence um, that are coming from the unit itself. 
Now then let's look at the Garmin Connect um, uploaded file. This is the one that actually was sent um, after I was done with the activity. Um, so it looks like more or less the same track, um, but what now you see here is more of the data down below in terms of stroke rate, um, as well as the heart rate itself um, and the pace. The heart rate was shown before, um, but it was, wasn't quite as easy to see as the detail that's, that's shown here. Now one thing you'll notice is that about halfway through the swim, it looks like the heart rate really kind of clicked into gear there. If I go ahead and expand this out, you can see that. Um, now, because it was showing me heart rate on the entire first half of the swim and it was changing values, that means that the data was being sent correctly from the meal link to um, the 920 XT. What that doesn't mean though is that it was correct data. Um, so in this case, it's more the fault of the link than it is the 920 XT. Um, now keep in mind though that the link wasn't really designed for this purpose, um, but traditionally speaking, if you play around with the position between the watch um, and your skin in terms of where that is, you can usually get it to be a little bit cleaner. So I'm gonna play around the next few days here and see if I can figure out the most optimal position for me to get data while swimming. Um, and then you'll see at some point at the halfway marker for reasons that aren't clear to me, um, it clicked and this looks like like valid heart rate data for the rest of the half of the, the swim um, versus the first half, you know, clearly I wasn't swimming along with the 70 to 80 heart beat per minute heart rate. Um, looking at the actual GPS track itself, um, you'll see it isn't quite as clean as some of the other ones I've done with the 920. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that because I had the meal link directly next to this, um, it was blocking the view from a satellite standpoint, so that would definitely impact um, satellite connectivity. It'll be interesting to try this exact same swim tomorrow or the next day without the link and see if I see any differences in, um, in the satellite look, look at itself. Now if I go lastly to, or almost lastly, to the Cinto Ambit 3 track, just for the fun of it, you can see it's a much cleaner track. Again, in this case, there was no other um, device next to that particular watch, so it had kind of a free sky access. Um, and then you'll note that distance here was 2,028 yards as recorded by the Ambit 3, um, whereas with the 920 XT it was 2,256, again because of the extra distance um, that I suspect interference may have played a part in. Um, if I look at the baseline, this was a unit that I put in my swim cap to record the distance. Um, you'll see it's 2,035, um, so the Ambit was very, very close there. Um, and it's you know a much cleaner track because it's something that was above the water the entire time. It isn't having to lose and regain access each time it goes through that. So that's just a quick look at things um, of how it looks on the actual uh, swim with live tracking and then after the fact what the swim data looks like. Thanks for watching.